From Washington, this is VOA News. President Obama declares no winners in budget deal. Deadly bombings sweep Iraq. I'm Ray Kugel reporting from Washington. President Obama says there are no winners in the bill reached by Congress to avoid a potential debt default and funding the government. Speaking at the White House Thursday, President Obama said the impasse that sparked the 16-day partial government shutdown inflicted completely unnecessary damage on the U.S. economy. Mr. Obama said he's looking for willing partners in upcoming negotiations with Congress on the budget and other important priorities. White House correspondent Dan Robinson reports. As federal employees return to work, including White House staffers furloughed by the shutdown, Mr. Obama spoke about Americans' frustrations with politics in Washington. He thanked what he called responsible Republicans for coming together to end the shutdown and debt ceiling crisis, but saying there are no winners here. The American people are completely fed up with Washington. At a moment when our economic recovery demands more jobs, more momentum, We've got yet another self-inflicted crisis that set our economy back. And for what? Mr. Obama said he will look for willing partners to get important work done, adding there is no reason leaders cannot govern responsibly without lurching from manufactured crisis to manufactured crisis. Dan Robinson, VOA News. The White House. A wave of car bombings and suicide bomb blasts ripped through the Iraqi capital Baghdad and two northern communities Thursday, killing at least 61 people and wounding about 200 others. Authorities say most of the Baghdad blasts happened in quick succession in Shiite Muslim parts of the city shortly after nightfall, including one near a playground that killed as many as six children. There were no immediate claims of responsibility. The U.S. Justice Department brought new charges against four former Blackwater Worldwide Security Guards for 2007 shootings in Baghdad that strained U.S.-Iraq relations. The four were charged Thursday with various counts of voluntary manslaughter, attempt to commit manslaughter, and the use of a firearm in a crime of violence. Fourteen Iraqi civilians were killed and 18 others injured in what the prosecutors say was an unprovoked attack. Two explosions in Burma have killed one and wounded six in eastern Shan State, the latest in a series of small-scale bombings in the country. Police are still investigating the explosions, which occurred in the town of Namkam Thursday, not far from Burma's border with China. Britain says it will allow Chinese companies to take a majority stake in its nuclear power projects as part of efforts to speed up London's power generation capabilities. Finance Minister George Osborne made the announcement Thursday during a visit to a nuclear power plant in the southern Chinese province of Guangdong. Mr. Osborne says Chinese companies will be allowed to invest in British nuclear projects initially as minority partners, and that any Chinese investment would also have to conform to very stringent British safety and security regulations. Five countries have won two-year terms on the UN Security Council. VOA's Margaret Bashir has details. UN General Assembly President John Nash announced the winners of the secret ballot vote. Chad, Chile, Lithuania, Nigeria and Saudi Arabia are elected members of the Security Council for a two-year term beginning on 1 January 2014. They will replace outgoing members Azerbaijan, Guatemala, Morocco, Pakistan and Togo. The seats are allocated regionally and all five candidates have been agreed in advance within their regional groups so they face no competition but they were all required to win a two-thirds majority approval of voting UN member states, which they did. Margaret Bashir, VOA News, 
the United Nations. Thousands of French students took to the streets of Paris Thursday to protest the expulsion of immigrant families, including two teenagers. Several of the demonstrators clashed with police during their march, but most of it reportedly took place peacefully. A new report from the Walk Free Foundation says an estimated 30 million people are enslaved around the world. The Australia-based group issued its first Global Slavery Index, a ranking of 162 countries by their prevalence of modern slavery. Researchers considered crimes such as human trafficking, forced labor, and exploitation of children. Mauritania is a nation of the highest percentage, with a long history of hereditary slavery based on ethnicity. I'm Ray Kugel, VOA News. Details on these and other stories on our website at voanews.com.